so blessed and privileged to um, to be called to ministry. Amen. Amen. To to just to be used of the Lord to uh, to make a difference in people's lives, to break bread, to share truth, to bring revelation, to encourage, to edify, to build up. Amen. Amen. That's what this new covenant ministry is purpose to do yes. is to uh, to build up and encourage uh, the body of Christ, the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. To further the kingdom of God. Amen. And his righteous governance and rule over all the earth and all of creation. Hallelujah. And so we continue in that quest tonight. And um, uh, I want to fellowship a little bit, just, uh, you know, start out with a thought. I do have scripture for it, but I um, <clears throat> heard this some time ago. Um, this idea, this uh, this reality that um, in uh, Luke 23, so I, might, I should just go ahead and read the Scripture first. That's a good place to start, right? Amen. Amen. Reading the Scripture. Um, let me see where I'm going to start here. We're in Luke chapter 23. And I think I'm going to start in verse 32. Just identify this. There were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming, uh, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you're under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, this is where I wanted to get, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, for Familiar passage of scripture. We've heard this story, uh, heard it preached, you know, seven ways from Sunday, covering all the subject matter, and I, I believe it's there, it's all very rich, yeah. and so true, and uh, just to recognize that the Lord Jesus, even in this moment um, of trial and uh, grief and pain and suffering, was so merciful that he would ask the Father to forgive them for they knew not what they were doing. Amen? Amen? And so that's encouraging and it's enlightening and that, that, uh, that blesses us to know. Um, and to think about these other two, and I, I, you know, I like to think, um, probably think a little too far sometimes, but that's what I do. That's what you know, my inquisitive mind and spirit does is, is it searches things out. But I, I was thinking about this and, and realizing that you know, really, there's, there's, a, there's this duality in all of us, right? And when we consider this moment here, the cross, the crucifixion, and, and two criminals uh, crucified with Jesus, and the one on the right is blaspheming and mocking and saying things like, if you be the Christ. Now, we've heard these words before, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Amen. And we know where those words came from and who it was that offered up these words. Uh, and it was none other than Satan. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And uh, Jesus, when we know that it had come time to enter into public ministry, the priesthood, uh, he came to John at the Jordan to be baptized of John. And we remember and we know that when Jesus came up out of the water, the scripture says, the heavens were open unto him. Yes. Amen. The heavens weren't open unto everybody at that point, right? But the heavens were open to him. And the Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove and lit upon him. And a voice came from heaven, the voice of the Father, and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. 
Amen. 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 And the very next scripture, it says immediately the Spirit drove him to the wilderness, right, to be tested. Yes, sir. 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted, no food, no water. Uh, 40 days and 40 nights, and he was there tempted um, of the devil. And this was one of the things that Satan said to him, if you be the Son of God, if you be the Son of God, right. if you be the Christ, right? right. Uh, denying and doubting and placing doubt. And this is his tactic. Can you say amen? Yeah. Right. Amen. He is the serpent was the whisperer. Amen. The deceiver, the El Satan, the deceiver. Jesus said he was a liar and a thief from the beginning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so I, I um, understand that, of course, in this moment of trial, in this moment of crisis, that the whisperer, the doubter, amen, the deceiver, the slanderer yeah. would be whispering words of doubt and unbelief. Right. And so this man said, if you be the Christ. And so this man next to him, on his left, on the other side, I believe typifies uh, Adam in the sense that that other man on the inside of us that desires deliverance, amen, that wants to be free, that wants to be right, that de desires to walk in fellowship with God. Amen. And in communion with the Father. Amen. All the way back to the garden yeah. when Adam walked, amen, in the cool of the day or the spirit of the day in fellowship with Father God. Can you say amen? amen. I believe that there is inside of every one of us at the same time the Adam that desires to walk in fellowship with our Father and the deceiver or the whisperer that would speak words of doubt and unbelief in moments of crisis and trial. Can you say amen? amen. But thank God that we always, He always causes us to triumph, amen? And gives us the victory in Christ. And I, I love that this man was, had the awareness, amen, the knowing, right? Right? To, to recognize his fate, his place, but yet still to cry out to the Lord Jesus for mercy. Amen. And uh, I like this because he cries here in, um, in verse number 42. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me. Uh, you know, I, I just started thinking about that, remember, and started doing a word search on that. And it's very interesting that um, you, you know, what you discover when you consider this word remember. The Oxford Dictionary says, remember is a verb, and it means this, to have in or to be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of someone or something that one has seen, known, or experienced in the past. Hallelujah. Now, I'm here to tell you that, we, that that's what remember is. When we remember, we are bringing to our awareness the very presence of our thought life and our consideration and our heart. We're bringing to our own awareness the reality that we have known and experienced Father God, amen, in past. Can you say amen? I love Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says that uh, before the foundation of the world, He chose us in Him holy and blameless. Amen? Wonderful, wonderful truth. And so we recognize this when we... Uh, uh, we, we can all, uh, uh, you know, find ourselves in this thief on the cross, in this moment of crisis and trial and judgment, crying out to God for mercy. Remember me. Put me back together, Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, haven't every one of us said that at one time or another? Yeah. Lord, put me back together. Lord, bring to my awareness the fellowship and the union and the oneness that I have experienced in eternity past. In you. Can you say amen? amen? I don't doubt that for a minute. I love some of the synonyms of this word. Remember, hold, to hold, to honor, to respect, to dedicate, and to keep. Wow. Can I say to you that that's what it is when we cry out to God, when we want to connect with our, our oneness? Amen. With the Lord Jesus, right? He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And when we desire to be connected in that way, God keeps us. He dedicates us. Amen. There is a, a ministry of respect and honor. And God holds us close and dear when we cry out to Him. Can you say amen? amen. And uh, 
the Greek word for remember here in this particular passage in Luke is the Greek word memnisko, and it's number 3403 in Strong's Greek Concordance. And again, it's a verb, and it means to remind. Now we're going to play on. We're going to we're going to play a little bit with this uh, this uh, preface re right. This prefix re because it means to do it. Re means to do again, right? To do over, to, to do again, to visit again. And so this word, actually, remember in the Greek, it means this. To remind, to recall, to recollect or recollect, right? Yeah. Amen. Proper, to properly recall, to bring to mind. And it's in the Greek uh, 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 grammatical structure, it's the middle voice. In the Greek, you know, they had a past voice and a, a middle or a present voice and then a future voice, which was which was similar to third person, but here it's the middle voice, and it means to be purposely active, not incidentally, but to be fixed by purpose on what is in, uh, considered. Can you say amen? Oh, glory. So Lord, remember me. This man was asking Jesus, don't just think about me in pass. Amen. Don't let just let it be incidentally. But Lord, let your mind, your occupation, your uh, awareness be filled with me. Can you say amen? amen? Did you notice that Jesus didn't rebuke the man? He didn't say you're being selfish. He didn't uh, re reject him or rebuke him. He says, you will be with me in paradise this day. Can you say amen? Sounds to me like he's holding him close, respecting him, dedicating him, right? Amen. Uh, well, let's just look at a few scriptures. I'm not going to turn to all of them. I'm just going to uh, kind of call them out, maybe paraphrase a little bit. But how about Psalm 106, verse 4, where the psalmist says, Remember me, O Lord, amen, with favor. <laughs> Glory to God. Can I tell you that's an appropriate prayer? To pray today and I, for you and I and all of us together in our lives, always appropriate to believe God for his favor. Can you say amen? Don't you know it's God's good pleasure to give the sheep the kingdom? Don't you know he, he's a good, good father that wants to bless us? Amen. Don't you understand that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness? Can you say amen? amen, amen. So it's perfectly appropriate for us to pray like the psalmist did, remember us, O Lord, with favor. Amen? How about Jeremiah 15 and verse 15? Remember me and care for me, Lord. Oh, I like that. How about Psalm 25 and 7? Do not remember my sins. Amen? Don't you know that that, that, that judgment is passed, that God has dealt with sin and the, the sacrifice, the sin offering of the Lord Jesus Christ? and the shedding of his precious lifeblood, that he washed our sins away from us. Amen. The psalmist said he separated our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Amen. And he put them in his sea of forgetfulness. Wow. What a metaphor, huh? That the all-omniscient, all-knowing God has the ability to forget something, and that's our sins and trespasses. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. How about Genesis 8 and 1 where it says that God remembered Noah? And Genesis 19 and 29 where it says that God remembered Abraham? And Psalm 98 and 3 where it says that He has remembered us in His loving kindness. Hallelujah. And that's also encouraging, isn't it? Isn't that comforting that God remembers us in His loving kindness? Yes. Psalm 136.23 says He remembers us in our low estate. Hallelujah. I'd say it's pretty low to be condemned as a criminal and, and, uh, and, and the judgment to be crucifixion. Amen. And you're nailed to a cross next to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd say God remembers you in your low estate when He says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, 14 through 16. I'm going to paraphrase it. Amen. But God said, Ken, is it possible for a nursing mother to forget her child? And God said, even if it was, that was possible. I will not forget you for behold. Now in West Virginia, that word behold means looky here. Did you know that? Come on, guys. I thought I'd get a better laugh out of that. Amen. 
Amen. God said, Behold, I have inscribed your name in the palms of my hands. Wow. Looks like a nail print, don't it? That's how you sign your name in, in the kingdom, with a nail print. Glory to God. He has, he has inscribed your name in the palms of his hand. Hallelujah. That's encouraging to me. Amen. 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 So remember means to recollect, to recollect. God, collect my broken pieces, right? Collect my scattered mind. Amen. I like that when the, you know, the, uh, the Roman centurion, when he, he asked, um, came to Jesus and, and, you know, was asking for, uh, for healing for a loved one. And he, he, he said, um, he, I, I'm trying to, trying to dial in. Now I'm all over the place. Brother Josh and I are just talking about this, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have Jonah over in the bottom of the ship and and Jesus in the belly of the whale or something here in a minute. But <laughs> hallelujah, uh, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. <laughs> Doesn't that describe us oftentimes? This this strange dichotomy of of faith and doubt and and confidence and and weakness. Amen, amen. And it's perfectly appropriate. To ask the Lord to remember you, to recollect. God, remember, stir up. Amen. Your loving kindness for me. Give me your favor again. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, he's ever present. Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. Can you say amen? Yes. Amen. Be encouraged tonight. I love you.